Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to J News Japan. This is my coverage on Fantastica Mania. And uh, I'm going to try to make this as short as possible because Fantastica Mania was a 10 day tour uh, for New Japan and CMLL, which is a Mexican Lucha Libre promotion. Uh, this is their 10th year anniversary. And they were uh, doing their tour that they do at the beginning of the year. We'll see how everything pans out from night one, which was on January 10th up to night 10 or should i say 11 really which was on january 20th i'm going to cover the 10th the 16th the 17th the 19th and the 20th because that covered the the tag the family tag team um portion of fantastica mania uh there if people aren't aware in mexico it is it's, it is a laden tradition uh that families go into the wrestling business uh via sons nephews uh you know grandfathers and uncles and all that stuff or whatever the case is a lot of lineage in in a in traditional mexican lucha libre so that was a part of the um fantastic mania roundup for this year's tour also there were storylines created within the 10-day tour itself uh that eventually were taken care of by the last two nights of the tour um, so I want to be able to make sure that everyone understands as to what's going on and how this came together. But to start off, uh, I wanted to do something, um, for those who watched Fantastica Mania and for those who appreciate, uh, CMLL and Lucha Libre Wrestling, uh, to start off as they like to say, or the main man Omar likes to say, uh, <laughs> I'm going to laugh doing this. But um, uh, let's get it going. Comenzamos! Ladies and gentlemen, night one, Fantastic Mania, January 10th. Here are the results from top to bottom. We're going to start with match one. Match one included uh, Ryus, Ryusuke Taguchi, Taguchi of Taguchi, uh, and Fuego from CMLL. Um, Fuego and Taguchi are basically the comedy acts of the of their respective promotions, and uh, they were used as such uh, for the tour. Um, they, by the majority throughout the nights of the tour, they actually had the first match of the night as well, um, which I found interesting. Um, but they were there basically as the as the the starters, the table setters to get the the, the crowds hyped up. Uh, the first match uh, of night one. Uh, was them versus a tag team of Suzuki Goon uh, variation, which was uh, uh, in the way that they said it during the show, Duuki and Kanemaru. Uh, in this particular match, uh, Fuego and Taguchi won this match. Fuego and Taguchi have good chemistry. They're funny wrestlers. They have good comedy. But at the same time, these guys are also two very good workers um, that can bring it in the ring. Uh, a lot of the, the storytelling part of... What was going on with the members of Suzuki Goon during the ten day tour was that they weren't be, they weren't able to get along with the Mexican wrestlers and, and by majority they weren't able to get along with by, uh, with themselves because they by majority lost uh, their matches. Second match of the night uh, included one young lion, uh, Yuya Yuimura, Guerrero Maya Jr. and Audaz uh, went up against Namahage, Luciferno. And Euphoria of CMLL fame. Um, I want to be able to pick out who belongs where, but I'll try to do that, you know, through uh, through through the through the the, the filling points throughout uh, the episode. In this particular match, it wasn't anything exciting that happened here. Um, they the the Rudos, the bad guys, the the team of Namahage, Luciferno, and Euphoria uh, were the winners of this match. Um, that went on in night one. Then there was a third match of the night, which was uh, one of their high flyers, and should I say the technicals, uh, were Flyer and Soberano Jr., or El Soberano, uh, versus uh, Tiger and La Leyenda Viviente, Negro Casas. Uh, in this particular match, it, you know, it was one of those where we hadn't seen, well, for me specifically, because I don't watch CMLL, I watch more AAA and The Crash, uh, when it comes to Mexican wrestling, I hadn't seen Negro Casas in years, 
Uh, it was he's 62 years old, and it was kind of interesting to see him in a, in, in a match uh, in 2020. Um, Tiger, uh, the other CMLL representative, the, these were all CMLL representatives. Tiger, his tag team partner in this particular match, is his nephew. Um, just to explain that part of it, um, there were uh, of the CMLL wrestlers, um, a few of them showed out throughout the tour. I want to say Soberano Jr. was one of the guys who really made an impression on me. Um, being that he's probably one of the faces of the of the promotion at at, at this at this uh, point in time, um, that team won. Soberano Jr. and Flyer, um, they they were the ones that won. Soberano Jr. Took, uh, had the pin on Tiger, but it was good to see Negro Casas out there as the legend uh, in the group. Uh, Flyer is fairly new to me, so but I know I've known that name for years, so he must be the son. Of who used to be Sobera, the, the original Soberano or Soberano Jr. as I understood it, uh, who used to be the wrestler now known as Euphoria. Uh, match four, we had a trios match here, all CMLL talent. Um, we had the return of Titan uh, and the Chavez brothers, Niela Roja and Angel de Oro, versus um, La El Territorio de Anita, uh, Forastero, Cuatrero, and Sansón. Um, these guys currently, Forastero, Cuatero, and Sanson are the trio's champions in CMLL. Um, and they were, this was the start of a build of a story throughout the, throughout the tour of the, the family tag team matches. Niebla Roja and Angel de Oro are brothers and they are tag team themselves. Um, and obviously we, if you've never watched, um, the Super Juniors before have never watched any New Japan wrestling or even ROH at this at this point in time. Teton has made his rounds in the U.S. and is one of the more popular CMLL wrestlers currently. The winners of this match uh, was the team of Teton, Niebla Roja, and Ángel de Oro. Um, and they won this particular match by submission, La Campana, which is like a, a swinging um, submission kind of a thing. Um, to go to the next match, the fifth match of the night, we had another six-man tag match, if you want to say, um, including one of the Young Lions, Yoda Suji, uh, Tanahashi, and Dulce Gardenia of CMLL uh, versus uh, Los Ingobernables de Japón, L.I.J., uh, Bushi, Takahashi, and Tetsuya Naito. Uh, this was the only night I can say that any of the... And I don't want to bad mouth the New Japan talent, but we all know what a, what the A roster is, what the B roster is in, in New Japan, um, and who the and who the Young Lions are. So this was the only night of the tour, I would say, that any of the A talent from New Japan was um, outside of Hiromu, probably on another night that I'm going to mention, um, that was part of the um, that was part of the tour here. Um, cause Tanahashi was on in all 10 nights. I think evil took part in about six or seven of the nights and Takahashi was in like about two or three. Um, you know, you didn't see guys like, um, man, who could I mention? There was no Jay White. There was no Will Ospreay. There was no, uh, there was no Okada. There was no Gorillas of Destiny. There was no, um, I guess you guys get the picture. And some of the older veterans were also involved in the Fantastic Mania Tour as well. But to get back to the results, uh, the team of LIJ were the ones who defeated the team of Yoda Suji, Tanahashi, and Dulce Gardenia. Um, and Takahashi defeated, or should I say, submitted Yoda Suji with the Boston Crab. Then we have the sixth match of the night, which was another six-man tag. This is... The recurring theme throughout the tour, not just this night. Um, a lot of six-man tags, a lot of tag team, um, a lot of tag team matches. If you just see me going through the results, it's just because a lot of these matches didn't have any depth to them. They didn't have anything that was really occurring, or that I can tell you that you know a story was really plotting there. Um, so the last match of the night, uh, CMLL representation in this particular team were Stuka Jr., Karistico, and Kojima from New Japan versus Okumura. Barbaro Cavernario and Ultimo Guerrero. Um, in this particular match, the team of Okumura, Barbaro Cavernario, and Ultimo Guerrero were the winners. Um, and Okumura pinned Stuka Jr. Now, this 
particular match did start a storyline throughout the tour between Okamura and Stuka Jr. Um, that became a match that I was actually looking forward to, a singles match that I was looking forward to between two um, veterans of CMLL, older gentlemen, probably in their 50s at this point. Um, so we'll, we'll run back to that as we go on. So we now have Fantastic Mania. The second night that was covered on New Japan World was the night on January 16th at Currican Hall. So we're going to go to that particular night right now to check out the results. So first match of the night was another tag match. Yet again, like I said, uh, Taguchi and Fuego were usually the starters. Um, in this particular match, uh, Duuki and Nabahage, they uh, were the tag team that were, that were facing uh, Fuego and Taguchi. Fuego and Taguchi won this particular match. Um, to start off the night, my two, uh, another tag team match. It was Guerrero Maya Jr. and Audaz versus Kanemuro and Luciferno. Um, yet again, the little storyline in where the Suzuki Goon members weren't necessarily working well with the CMLL, uh, with the CMLL counterparts was working here. Uh, the Luciferno and Kanemuro weren't necessarily getting along or in sync. And so that allowed uh, Audaz and Guerrero Maya Jr. to get the win here. Uh, match three. We had the another six-man match, if you want to call it here, um, which was uh, Tanahashi, Dulce Galenia from CMLL, and Flyer from CMLL versus members of LIJ, Bushi, Takagi, and Evil. Uh, in this particular match, we had uh, the members of LIJ defeat the team of Tanahashi, Gardenia, and Flyer. Um, not much to say here. Dulce Galenia is... Uh, a wrestler from CMLL from Mexico who's considered an exotico. An exotico is a wrestler who basically um, does very... What was the word that they used to use for gold dust? Uh, uh, androgynous. <laughs> he does very androgynous things in the ring. Um, very playful, very exotic, very flamboyant uh, things in the ring. Um from from that from that standpoint, but the guy can really wrestle. He's a really really good worker, but there were a lot of uh, the, it was a lot of the comedy stuff where he would uh, smack the opposing um, the oppo the opposing uh, people in the match in the butt or attempt to kiss them and stuff like that or whatever. Just typical exotico stuff that happens. This has been in Lucha Libre for years if you've never seen it. Um, so that what was going on. But the members of LIJ won this particular match. The fourth match of the night, we had uh, Stuka Jr. and Titan versus Okumura and Forastero of uh, Territorio de Dinamitas. In this particular match, Forastero pinned Titan. Um, not much to say in this match. Yet again, Okumura and Stuka Jr. were battling it out and doing some really hard hard hitting and punching Okamura was uh, attempting to take off Stuka Jr.'s mask. If you're not aware, in Lucha Libre, trying to take off a Luchador's mask is considered a disqualification and is, and is frowned upon. Um, fifth match of the night here, we have a special tag team match, as they call it. It was Caristico and Kojima versus Barbaro Cavernario and Ultimo Guerrero. In this particular match, uh, Cavernario and Ultimo Guerrero won out. Um, against Karistico and Satoshi Kojima. In this particular match, this is when you started to see the storyline start uh, to unfold between Barbaro Cavernario and Karistico. Uh, they would have a singles match uh, within the last, um, I think, I believe, the last uh, show of the tour. Uh, we have the sixth match of the night, which is the, CL, the CMLL Family Tag Tournament match. This is the first round. Soberano Jr. and Euphoria versus Cuatrero and Sansón from uh, Territorio Dinamitas. Soberano Jr. is the son of Euphoria, which is why it's, uh, it's part of the family tag team match. And Cuatrero and Sansón of Territorio Dinamitas are brothers. Um, so the uh, the tag team of Cuatrero and Sansón won this particular match against Euphoria and Soberano Jr. This is one of the, uh, one of the matches that I can point out that where I started to see the work rate for the luchador start to pick up in the tour because a lot of the stuff was very, I would say, hunky dory, sort of reminiscent of WWE Five Moves of Doom shit that was going on for the first couple of nights. Um, so this is one of the first matches I thought uh, where I started to see the work rate between the wrestlers pick up. Um, the seventh match of the night, also for the CMLL Family Tag Tournament, 
was Niebla Roja and Angel de Oro, the Los Hermanos Chavez versus Tiger and Negro Casas. I mentioned before, Tiger is the nephew of Negro Casas, and, and Niebla Roja and Angel de Oro are actually brothers who look very much alike. In this particular match, Niebla Roja and Angel de Oro won this match. Um, and that was the wrap up on that particular night. So now we're going to move on to the January 17th uh, night of the of the tour which is also at Kirk and Hall so we're gonna get down here to the 17th so now first match of the night yet again we started it off it was Taguchi and Fuego versus Duki and Luciferno this time and Duki and Luciferno didn't get along the night before it was Luciferno and freaking Kanemaru now they try to team these guys up and they weren't getting along they weren't in sync fuego and taguchi won this particular match uh second match of the night was a six-man tag match gerardo maya jr flyer and stuka jr uh versus kanemaru namahage and okimura uh yet again um okimura uh was trying to get his trying to get his legs in on stuka jr stuka jr this time i believe had the uh came away with the upper hand in the battle uh, uh, of 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 the uh, the overall tour, but the team of Kanemaru and Amahage and Okumura defeated the team of Stuka Junior Flyer and Guerrero Maya Junior. Um, third match of the night, we had Tanahashi, Dusagadenia, and Audaz versus the members of Lij Bushi Takagi and Evil. Bushi Takagi and Evil defeated that particular team. More comedy in this particular port, uh, part. This particular match. Uh, Gardenia yet again with his uh, usual exoticos uh, fray uh, during the match smacks in the butt attempted kisses um, you know androgynous shit but the LIJ team went out fourth match of the night it was a, spent a special singles match between Titan and Forastero uh, Titan and Forastero went to a 13 minute match and it was one of the better singles matches during the tour uh, Titan ended up winning uh, this match with a springboard double stomp. Fifth match of the night, a special tag match, Caristico and Kojima versus Barbaro Cavernario and Ultimo Guerrero. Uh, this is where they started to uh, build up the uh, si the singles match that I think would take part in tomorrow in the January 18th show between Ultimo Guerrero and Satoshi Kojima, and yet again still building that feud between Cavernario and Caristico. To go on to the future, uh, Kojima and Caristico won this particular match over Guerrero and Cavernario to have that result in this. Next up, this is the third place match for the CMLL Tag Team Tournament. Uh, we had Soberano Jr. and Euphoria versus Tiger and Negro Casas. Um, Soberano Jr. and Euphoria beat Tiger and Negro Casas. Uh, it's the later match here in the night. We had more tag team action for the CMLL Family Tag Team match. We had Niebla Roja and Angel de Oro versus Cuatrero and Sansón of Territorio Dinamitas. Uh, Territorio Dinamitas won this match. This match. I'll tell you what, man. From the matches that I, I... I have a very good memory. And watching this match, I was like, this was tag team wrestling um, from the Lucha standpoint. This was a very exciting match from beginning to end. And it showed off uh, their skills tremendously. And I was excited finally to see something that I can get into and stick my teeth into. So this was a very, very good match. But Cuatrero and Sansón beat uh, Los Hermanos Chavez in this particular match. So on to the on to the show of the 19th that we have the results for here. The 19th had a interesting feel to it the last two nights of the tour i would say were the better nights of the tour which i think has always been the case uh from a wrestling standpoint and from um leaning into and being able to get into the matches so to start off the first match of the night it was yoda suji and aldas of this of cmll yoda suji being a young lion versus namahage and luciferno uh namahage and luciferno who are both from the cmll side of things uh, defeated Yoda Suji and Aldas. Second match of the night, Guerrero Maya Jr. Flyer and Soberano Jr. in a six-man tag um, won up against members 
uh, uh, from Suzuki Goon, uh, Duuki, and Kanamaru, and then Tiger was added onto that team as a six man. Um, the team of Sobrano Jr. Flyer and Guerrero Maya Jr. defeated the Suzuki Gun plus Tiger added faction. Uh, third match of the night, we had uh, Titan, Neil La Roja, and Angel de Oro versus El Territorio de Amitas, uh, Forastero Cuatero, and Sansón. Uh, the team of uh, Neil La Roja, Angel de Oro, and Titan defeated uh, El Territorio de Amitas. This was basically, you know, the makeup, right? Because uh, Neil La Roja and Angel de Oro had been defeated the night before by Territorio Dinamitas. So, you know, in the six-man tag, instead of the regular tag, they won out. Um, and that was a very exciting match itself. A lot of high-flying, Lucha Libre-based action. Um, and it was one of the better matches, one of the better six-man uh, or trios matches that, that went on that uh, throughout, the, throughout the tour. Now, this is where things got uh, better for me, right? This is was for the NWA World Historic Light Heavyweight Championship match. Uh, Stuka Jr. was the champion uh, versus Okamura. Um, they went head to head. This was a 10 minute match. They are two of the elder statesmen in the CMLL, um, but they delivered a very good match, a very hard hitting match. It had all the story uh, storytelling weaved in in there from all the different times that Okamura was trying to unlace the mask during the tour and just beat the crap out of Stuka Jr. and all the different tag matches. Um, and then Stuka Jr. finally, you know, he only got the upper hand once during the tour. And then in this particular one-on-one -on -one match, Stuka Jr. Uh, won out. And he beat Okumura in this match. Good match to watch. It's a good work rate from older gentlemen. You don't necessarily see that a lot in in, in American wrestling. Uh, the older guys really get really slowed down. And, and, and they don't necessarily work really good psychological matches um, in current day. Uh, back in the day, more that was that was more of a thing. But now, currently, I feel like the older wrestlers don't really don't really do much um, when it comes to storytelling and being able to, you know, tell great story. And I say that by majority, not all the time. So you know, I'm not gonna mix words there. Uh, fifth match of the night, another third, another six man match. It was Taguchi Fuego and Dulce Gardenia versus members of Lij Bushi Tagagi and Evil. Um, the Lij team went out. Uh, Bushi, the Bushi roll on Fuego. Then we had the sixth match of the night, which was the CMLL World Heavyweight Championship match versus Kojima and Uzumo Guerrero. This match was built up for like about three shows of the tour. Um, and I was looking forward to it because I wanted to see what, what Kojima could do against Guerrero. Because Uzumo Guerrero, even at his age, is still moving and grooving and he's the heavyweight champ over in CMLL and he's a good representative. Um, of, of what Lucha Libre is. And he's a very good worker. I've seen him work at an ROH. I've grown up watching him on TV. So um, in this instance, as you as you probably figured, you know, titles aren't going to change hands, um, especially if you're, you know, a New Japan wrestler versus a CMLL wrestler. So Utsuma Guerrero won this match against Kojima. At the end of the match, lots of respect. Uh, none of that uh, BS crap that you see in some wrestling shows where... Uh, people just walk out on this on on, on one another at the end of a match. Now hands were raised, and and you know bows were were uh, were given out. Then the seventh match of the night, which was the Black Cat Memorial match, Black Cat, um, a a old school wrestler from the '80s who was the first wrestler to tr to go from Japan to Mexico. Um, died many years ago. Uh, it's a memorial match to him because he was the one who curated the relationship between CMLL and New Japan. Um, so they have this uh, this match happen the uh, the night before the last night of the tour. Uh, this match was a six man tag match. It was Tiger Mask, Hiroshi Tanahashi, and Caristico versus Valero Cavernario, Euphoria, and Negro Casas. In this in this particular match, we saw a even more fervent. Um, Exchange between Cavernario and Caristico at the end of this match. Caristico uh, and, and Cavernario were really going at it. Um, the winners of this match were Tiger Mask, Tanahashi, and, and Caristico's team over the other team. Um, but it was really more of a build uh, for the Caristico versus Barbaro Cavernario singles match, which was happening uh, the next night over. So 
they'll uh and at the by the end of this match, Caristico had challenged uh Barbaro Cavernario to a mask versus hair match, but Cavernario would was would walk away from Caristico and not give him an answer. But uh, I'll let you guys know with the next night what happened there. So to wrap up for the last the last night of the tour, which was January twentieth, uh, we have the matches going on. Match one: Taguchi and Fuego versus Duki and Kanamaru, and obviously. Taguchi and Fuego win their match. But Suzuki Goon in this particular match was in sync. They were in sync. They started the match off in traditional Suzuki Goon way. They didn't even wait for the freaking bell to ring. They pounced on the team. But Fuego and Suzuki ended up winning out in a very short match. Uh, second match of the night was Tiger Mask versus Tiger. This was the match of the Tigers. Um, but Tiger is still considered, I guess, a younger wrestler, even though he's in his mid to late 20s. Um, and the veteran Tiger Mask won this particular match. It was a solid match. I wouldn't say it was it was the greatest, but it was a solid enough match uh, to to watch. Then we had a six man tag, which was Guerrero Maya Jr., Aldas, and Flyer versus Navahage, Luciferno, and Euphoria. Um, in this match, the team of Flyer, Aldas, and Guerrero Maya Jr. won this match out. So that happened there. The fourth match of the night, another six-man tag match. Yuya Uramura made his second appearance of the, of the tour uh, and uh, was teamed up with Ta with Tana and Dulce Gardenia uh, versus members of LIJ yet again. That was the overall arc storyline. Dulce Gardenia trying to be and get all androgynous and get all flirty with the members of LIJ, all of the members of LIJ, Bushi, Takagi, and Evil included. Uh, this time, LIJ defeated that particular team, um, and they went on from there. Then the fifth match of the night, another six-man match in this, uh, Stuka Jr., Soberano Jr., Satoshi Kojima versus Okumura, Negro Casas, and Ultimo Guerrero. In this particular match, Negro Casas finally was able to pick up a win, pick up a pin um, with his classic La Casita, what we like to call the Mahi Straw Cradle. Um, he picked that up on Stuka Jr. The sixth match of the night was the National Six-Man Tag Team Championship match. The trios championships for CMLL. It was Titan, Niebla Roja, and Angel de Oro versus uh, El, uh, El Territorio de Alamitas, yet again, Forastero, Cuatero, and Sansón. Uh, the champs retained. And this was probably one of, pro, not probably, this was the best six-man match of the tour. So uh, it went over well, a lot of good action uh, going on in this particular part. Titan showed out. Um, and then I think Niebla Roja and Angel de Oro showed me throughout the entire tour that they were just on top of their game from the ring of the bell to the end uh, of every match, no matter if they won or lost. Those guys impressed the shit out of me, I would have to say. Uh, Soberano Jr. impressed me. Um, I would also say the Territorio Dinamitas impressed me. Those guys are a good team. They function well together um, from the CMLL talent. I was expecting more from other CMLL talents, and I'll, I'll wrap that up after I'm done with the matches uh, um, and, and go forward from there. Then the last match of the night was the NWA World Historic Middleweight Championship. The champion was Caristico, formerly known as as um Sin Cara in in WWE and also formerly known as Mystico in uh Mexico as well. Uh so Caristico versus Barbaro Cavernario. This match was probably the best singles match of the entire tour. Um it just w it, it went to so many different places because I hadn't seen throughout the matches that I had watched throughout the tour, Caristico would really do much. He was boring me the majority of the time throughout the tour, and that's just me being sincere and honest. And that finally, during this match, I saw way more out of him in this match than I had seen the entire tour. And that kind of sucks to say because, you know, obviously as a wrestling fan, when when you're so geared towards watching a certain product, you, you I guess the expectation is, yo, they're going to do dope shit all the time. And it was like they waited till the last show to give us the best uh, particular uh, match to showcase Caristico's skill. But I then came to find out that Caristico was hurt. Um, uh, he's eventually going to have surgery sometime soon uh, to repair something. So 
you know, I guess he wasn't doing too much so that he wouldn't further injure himself um, in any of those other matches. But yet again, he showed out in this particular match. by Okada Nadio, I believe, was showing out the entire tour. Um, you know, a lot of character work for Barbaro Cavernario, but he's also a very talented um, in-ring wrestler. Caristico is known as the technical. The technicals are the good guys, and Barbaro Cavernario is a rudo who are the bad guys with the heels in this particular case. Probably the best singles match of the night. Uh, so to round this whole thing up, I know we're at the half an hour point. This will get edited somewhere in between. I don't really care. Um, but um, yet again, man, to say that a lot of the CMLL talent uh, I was uh, impressed with. Um, like I said, Barbaro Cavernario, he impressed me. Caristico, not so much. Uh, Niebla Roja and Ángel de Oro, those guys are really, really good. Titan is good. Uh, Territorio Dinamitas. Outside of what I, I mean... I mean Cuatero and Sanson, they do their thing. Forastero, not so much, but he's the older gentleman. He's the uncle of Cuatero and Sanson. Um, so, uh, you know, you, 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 save the, you save the juice uh, for the, uh, the older gentleman during the matches, obviously. Um, you know, Stuka Jr., for being one of the elder statesmen in CMLL, he showed out the entire tour. Uh, very impressive. So, Verano Jr. is like, um, he is their premier super junior. And I hope to see him in um, in Best of Super Juniors this year. Uh, Ultimo Guerrero is their, is their heavyweight champion. Ultimo Guerrero never disappoints. He always puts on good matches. Negro Casas looks good for a 62-year-old man in the ring. He looks better than some of the dudes in their freaking 40s. And that's, just, that's, just, that's saying a lot, man. That's really saying a lot. So that's why I've, I've always understood the respect that a lot of um, wrestlers who know their history from from a, from a global standpoint, always have had for Negro Casas. Um, to also say that Dulce Gardenia, the exotico of the bunch, uh, also impressed me. Outside of the outside of his act as a wrestler, um, he really put on a good show in between the ropes. That was always that that was always good to see throughout the tour. Um, Lij never disappoints. Yuri Mura is going to be a freaking star um, in the future. Uh, just to say. I think that by majority, when it came to some of the CMLL talents, uh, the guys who I was mostly disappointed in, um, I, I, I feel like I didn't see much out of them, or were Guerrero Maya Jr., Aldas, Flyer, um, Lucy Fedno, understandably so, because he's an older gentleman. Um, Euphoria was all right. It wasn't like he was fantastic, but he was all right. And Namahage, I felt like he, to me, me personally, not saying that, you know, he's, he's been in the business for a long period of time. But Amahage was just like an extra piece that was thrown in last minute. Even on the even in the last show, I feel like it was so telling to me. In the last show of the night, um, there, was a, there was a roundup picture of all the talent between CMLL and, and, and New Japan Pro Wrestling. He wasn't even there. Like one of the other um, representatives from CMLL had his freaking mask in his hand to show... Uh, that he participated or whatever the case is, but you can, like for me specifically, you can really tell Namahage wasn't even into uh, the tour. He was just like an extra added piece that was thrown in later. Um, I think Tiger, from the CMLL standpoint, he still got a lot to show and prove for himself. He didn't really show me much um, from that standpoint. Uh, Fuego, man, listen, that guy's entertaining as shit. He is he is the Mexican uh, version of Taguchi, he dances, he does a whole lot of shit, man, but he's also a, a, a good in-ring performer, um, so it was good to see, so, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say and apologize for um, not getting this video out to you guys sooner, uh, I've just been going through a whole lot of crap lately, or whatever, but I finally got around to it, just to let you know, coming up, the uh, New Beginning Tour stuff, um, I think... We're gonna wait on the new beginning USA stuff. I was speaking to the to the main man, the head man in charge, uh, SP3. Uh, the true true heel heat will cover the new beginning in Sapporo shows, and for next week when they do happen, I will be covering the new beginning in Osaka shows. So look forward to that. Um, just to wrap it up, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for. Uh, hanging in there with me for this last half an hour and all these results because I was not aware that Fantasca Mania was such a drawn-out tour um, But you know, I had fun 
uh, it was cool to watch some of the some of the nerdy things that I like to watch, like the intros of of, of Fantastic Mania, um, with the uh, with the voiceover work to, for the intros. Omar is a fantastic ring announcer, man. That cool every freaking beginning of every show. Uh, always, always put a smile on my face as you guys can see. Um, it's always dope to listen to and always dope to watch. Um, so I have now uh, started. Uh, I subscribe to the CMLL channel on YouTube so I can watch more CMLL because I don't get to watch it on Spanish television anymore. Um, because it's not. I don't believe it's if it's if it is on. It's on a channel that I don't particularly watch on a regular basis. Um, but now I'm starting to watch it more to see as to who else. Uh, is in CMLL, what other stars are there, and to just to get a more of a feel of who of who else wrestles for CMLL outside of the the gentlemen that were present for this tour. Um, so that's the wrap up. This has been J News Japan episode two. Look forward to episode three coming. I will be covering the new beginning in Osaka uh, shows yet again. Like I said, True Hill Heat will cover the new beginning in Sapporo shows. And we'll be going from there, guys. All right? So take it easy. Be well. And uh, stay wrestling, fans. Peace.